Hi, Caroline Carney here at Palline Arts with Philip McConnell, who is one of the artists showing with our juried show that starts on March 17th. Philip, would you introduce us to your piece? Uh, yes. Well, first, hello. Second, uh, this piece is titled Tranquility. I actually shot this piece in my mentor's studio where the Buddha statue and the flowers and the clouds are outside her window, actually. So this is all a compilation of one afternoon that I spent with her in her studio. Her name is Tamara Torres, wonderful woman, phenomenal artist. So for me, whenever I see a Buddha statue, it echoes a sense of peace because that's what it's supposed to do is, you know, resonate peace. It's supposed to be a peaceful image that you relate peace to, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a statue, though. It's also the mixing of the plants. Plants have a sense of, you know, not only creating oxygen and things that we, you know, need to live. The color green is very calming to me. So whenever I see a large variety, a large assortment of plants, it brings me a sense of peace. And along with the Buddha statue, it's like peace times too. So for me, this whole thing that I created is to create a sense of tranquility. When you look at it, I want you to feel a sense of escapism. I want you to feel outside of yourself. I want you to look at it and get lost in it. And I want whatever is going on with you in that moment to just kind of melt away and for you to be tranquil. I think that's so beautiful. And I love that basically you've captured a series of uh, metaphors for calm and layered moments into a full piece that you can focus in on. Your technique is really interesting. And I don't know if a lot of people... Uh, understand uh, how your process kind of works because click chart is kind of new. Can you talk a little bit about that? A little bit new, yeah. Actually, it comes from a movement from the 60s called the data movement where oh, yeah. they were manipulating like VCR wires yeah. and like hard manipulating things. This is a little bit different. This whole process is done through coding. So what I'll do is I'll take a picture, put it in a basic text editor, which is used to write lines of code and then save it, look at it. And when I put the picture in the text editor, it converts it into literal lines of code. And then from there, I can manipulate it, add stuff, take stuff, copy, paste to create these images. How do you, um, so how do you, do you, I'm going to guess that you add and take away from that code based mm -hmm. on the reactions that you see until it comes together into an organic, like super charged organic yeah. looking piece that has a little something extra is that. Is that mm -hmm. kind of close? So it's a lot of doing something, saving it, looking at it, then doing something, <laughs> saving and looking at it, doing something, saving and looking at it. And although this piece is small and it's only three images put together, despite all the color variation that exists within it, this piece took me three days to make, working at about like five or six hours every day. Yeah, that totally so makes sense. The pieces are very labor intensive, even though they look like very simplistic, like it's very labor intensive because <laughs> it's a very... There's no easier way to do it. It all has to be done manually. How did you get into this? So I started out as a programmer. Okay. And totally makes sense. <laughs> makes sense, right? I so used I, to work training programmers. Okay. So you know. On the instructional design side, <laughs> I was not good at code. So I started, yeah. I started programming. And then from there, I was coding the website in HTML in the text editor. And I went to go put in a picture image. And it distorted on the actual website, the web page I was on. Okay. So I was learning how to make web pages and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And I just kept repeating the process and repeating the process and repeating the process until I got here. One of the biggest inspirations for me was I saw a documentary on Basquiat and it was called The Radiant Child. Okay. And it was just people talking about him, his life, his work and things like that. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> and then I remembered the thing that I had done with the manipulating of the code. And I was like, oh, I can do that. Yeah. And here we are, five years later. You're Matt, you're meeting the technology and the artistic, and like technology and writing code is very. What's interesting about it, I think, that people forget is it is a language that you're writing. So everybody has their unique style. So for you to extrapolate out into this creative mm -hmm. uh, piece um, and use that with your creativity is really beautiful. So we hope you'll come see Philip's work uh, at Palais Arts, uh, March 17th through the end of May. Thank you.